Hi, everybody. Hi, my name is Tamar, and I am so delighted to be here tonight to tell you about Jean Barrett, or Barrett, or however we pronounce her last name. This talk combines several things that are very dear to the Audling community. First up, yes. number two, yes. and in this case, botany. So there we go. Thank you very much. And it includes an element that I am very fond of, which is badass women. Yes. Not the one that's on the screen, but she's just the best example right now of a badass woman. So the subject of my talk tonight is actually this lady, Jean Barrett, or Barrett, or Barre, I guess. Um, and she was born in France in 1740. Her family were poor serfs. They were most likely illiterate in the sense as her dad uh, made an X. He didn't write his signature. And as such, she had very few options that were open to her as a poor person and as a woman. The poor at that time were seen at best as undeserving and a lot of times as, as sinful. Um, and women had very few rights in the legal system Independent women at the time, whether financially independent or just in their personhood, were seen as a threat. Um, the establishment did not like that. But Jean's parents taught their daughter to identify uh, medicinal plants, training her to be what was then called an herb woman, which is basically a healer. And as a healer, she gained independence. She got to roam the countryside. She had her freedom. She went exploring from a very young age. And she taught herself to read. We're not quite sure how that happened. And she became uh, an, an accomplished botanist. This is the Datura plant. She did not discover it, but it's a fascinating plant. And I just had to put it in there because, whoa, yeah. While out in the fields of France, she met a young man, Philippert Gummerson. It's this handsome guy. And he was a medical professional, which was okay for men at the time. And he was a plant enthusiast. Not sure if this kind of enthusiast. He was definitely uh, a plant enthusiast. He liked to roam the fields and gather plants and so on. He was also a nobleman and widowed which could be the beginning of a great romance novel, but instead it was the beginning of a great adventure. Adventure, adventure and ships. The two of them <laughs> began collecting plants together. Uh, first she was his teacher, she taught him a lot, and then she was his assistant, and I'm not sure how well she took the change from teacher to assistant, but I like to think that it was the interest of adventuring. So. They went out, they collected stuff. At some point, they became lovers and moved in together. So we kind of do have a, maybe a romance novel in there. Um, but the extent of their relationship at that time, based on my research, is under some controversy. Um, about two years from what I've read, and the, the dates are kind of wonky back then. I'm not, you know, don't take that as absolute truth. But a number of years after they met and fell in love, they heard that uh, this guy on the screen behind me, Bougainville, uh, was setting out on an expedition on a ship for the French government. And the French government was at that point looking for a plant specialist to join um, the, the expedition. And they were going off to explore new territories for the glory of France. And while they were out there, let's see what's growing out there. At that time, the French Navy did not allow women on its ships. So that was no good. And she, she had no role models for what she was doing. Um, there were no other that I could find. I'm sure there were, but history that I found doesn't record them of female adventurers and explorers. Um, now, the ship's captain, Mugenville, wanted Philippert. And Philippert did not want to go without Jean. Because, but because women were not allowed, they weren't quite sure what to do. And so she had to get creative. And she came up with an idea. Now, given that this is around 1765, it was probably more like this kind of an idea. <laughs> Their plan was that Jean would dress up as a man yeah. and 
oh my goodness, just show up at the dock the morning that the ships were going to set sail, and Cumberson would offer her a job right on the spot, and she would just take it and offer her services, his, her services, in order to uh, get a job on, the, on this expedition. And holy crap, it worked. <laughs> and she boldly went where no woman had gone before. She became Jean Barrett. She passed as a man, dressing in men's clothing and binding her chest, and that made boat work kind of difficult. It's really hard to heave heavy things and do the work of a sailor. Um, but she did it. It was a little hard to breathe sometimes, but, you know, she managed to do it. But at some point, the other sailors um, noticed some strange behaviors in Jean. For example, she didn't piss over the side of the boat. She never got undressed in front of anybody else. Her and... Cumberson uh, had a cabin, and that gave her some privacy, but at some point, the crew became suspicious. Very suspicious. So Jean came up with an idea. She and Philibert, because she was very, Jean was very shy about this, spread the word that Jean had been captured by Ottomans on a previous expedition and had been castrated. So he was embarrassed to be seen uh, naked. And it worked. <laughs> now, in the sailor's defense, at that time, the story was not as far-fetched as we might think, and stories of the barbarians, Aut barbarian Ottomans, you know, spread around. Um, but it worked. The rest of the crew accepted this. The two of them carried on collecting plants and identifying them. They went on many uh, shore excursions off the boats and so on. One of the things that they discovered was the bougainvillea, which is on the screen behind me. It's a beautiful plant. There's actually evidence, so they named it after the ship's captain, but there's actual evidence to suggest that she discovered this amazing plant. So we might want to change its name to Barrettvillea. And I didn't know, I mean, this plant grows on hedges all over the place. Lower hate. Lower hate. Lower hate. Yep. <laughs> it actually has some very good medicinal properties. It's not just a pretty plant. It is used for, to treat coughs and sore throats. The infusion of flowers is used for low blood pressure. Leaves are used to cure diabetes, too. There's help for hepatitis. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff that this, I know, that this pretty plant can do. Next time you walk by a Barrettvillea, Notice what it's doing. See what I'm doing? So this worked. They did this, the thing. They discovered the plants and so on. She passed for Jean for over a year, but finally her secret was out. And there are various versions of this story of how her identity got out. And some are more troubling and violent than others. I will post links on something weird after the show. Um, in any case, they were on... Uh, in Tahiti, which is in the circle in the screen behind me, um, and after a shore excursion, during the shore excursion, something happened, again, various uh, versions of this, including rape and all kinds of icky stuff. After the shore excursion, when she was back on the ship, she went into seclusion. She stayed inside their cabin. She was now known as Jean again, so everybody knew that John was actually Jean. Um, and she stayed in the cabin pretty much for the rest of the voyage. When they got to Mauritius, which is in the, uh, uh, on the screen behind me, which was then a French colony, the captain, uh, Bougainville, decided that, that she needed to be off the ship because no women allowed. Boo, yes. right? So what are they going to do? Stand, stay in Mauritius and what are they supposed to do there? Oddly enough, they came up with a story. <laughs> they spread the word that Philippa just had to stay there as the government desperately needed him to, and so his assistant stayed with him. So they stayed. It worked. <laughs> they stayed uh, in Mauritius for a few years. Um, they went on expeditions, which are on the screen behind me. During the time there, she had a child. Some sources say nine months after the Tahiti excursion. Other sources have it at different times. She gave it up for adoption because they weren't married. 
and because she really liked her independence and it just wasn't a right time for her to have a child. Um, so they were there and after seven years there, Philip Bird died and she is alone um, over there and she needs to figure out what the next step could be. She kind of wanted to go back to France, but women ships no good. So what did she do? You guys can fill this in. She came up with a plan. She married this handsome dude who was a non-commissioned officer in the army, in the French army. And so once again, they boarded a ship. She went back to France and this made her the first woman ever to circumnavigate the globe. <laughs> Unfortunately, nobody but her knew it. <laughs> because Philipford had died. We don't know whether her new guy knew about it. The captain wasn't going to say anything because she wasn't supposed to be a woman on his ship in the first place. So she received no welcome and no special honors. Um, now, I want to just pause for a second. This was a huge deal. This was in 1770 uh, something. Up until then, there had been, according to my research, 24 circumnavigations, all of them by men. There were no female explorers, like I said. This was also the first time for the French to circumnavigate the globe. And so the first time that the French circumnavigated the globe, it was a woman. <laughs> yep. <laughs> now her botanical accomplishments and her circumnavigation, um, they were both possible be because she was on board and her presence on the original ship, on Big Beale's ship, also meant that Cummerson, who was a specialist at that point, was on the ship. So she broke the rules of her time and her, in doing so, she enabled this expertise to the, to the expedition, uh, both hers and his. At some point, she did get some recognition. She received wages from her late lover's family. They knew that they were lovers and not married. They gave her her due wages. Um, and perhaps more impressively, she also received from then on until her death an annual stipend from the French government for her botany work. Yeah. Which means that she finally gained the reputation for being the, the badass that she was um, and it made clear that her accomplishments in the field of botany were, were at last recognized. She was recognized as an explorer and a scientist. And this recognition, regardless of her gender, is part of what makes her so special. So yay for badass women. I want to talk for just a second about this guy. He was the prince. He was, uh, he was on the ship at the time. And he could be, if somebody wants to pitch about this guy, he could be a whole fascinating talk just in himself. He did some gender explorations of his own. Um, exactly. See, it all comes around. He was on board. And years later, when he wrote his memoirs, um, he, he had a quote about her, which I would like to share with you. He said, I want to give her all the credit for her bravery. She dared confront the stress, the dangers, and everything that happened that one could realistically expect on such a voyage. Her adventure should, I think, be included in a history of famous women. And I think so too. So here it is, a toast to the brave women who make history, whether recognized in their lifetimes or long after. Thank you very much.